And look, he landed a left hook when he did that. And he's staggered in the left hand. Moments of what has been a big first round for Shannon Briggs. He gets him again. Opine saved by the. Daniel Jacobs and Peter Quinlan went toe to toe, trading heavy shots in the opening round of their WBA regular middleweight title when this happened. Jacobs doing a good job. This is probably the most unusual chicken dance ever. Quillen on inline skates wow. and the... Like I said before, I was corralling them and throwing big shots. One of my favorite shots. This is the end of the fight right here. Yeah. I mean, obviously he was hurt, but like I said, this is one of those sports where anything can happen. I know he prepared 100% and, and so did I. And uh, all I can do is just pray for him for the future. But the best man won today. About the stoppage, this is where we, he had already been in major trouble. and. Paulie's point is well taken. Jacobs was picking his spots very effectively. And here's where that little stutter hop comes. And the question is, Harvey Doc has all the time in the world here. The question you have to ask yourself, is he going to utilize that time? That's a fighter who at this juncture, according to Harvey Doc, shouldn't continue. But you wonder. An overconfident Abraham Okina bit off more than he could chew when he faced veteran fighter Shannon Briggs. They trade left hands, now a right hand over the top from Shannon Briggs, and Okine goes... The undefeated Okina, with only 14 fights, was outclassed every second of every round. For Shannon Briggs, he gets him again, Okine... A couple of hooks from Briggs left Okina on extremely rubbery legs in round three. Now there's a couple good left hands, and a big right hand, and Okine goes flopping down to the canvas. For Nothing complicated. After taking off the second round, which is what kept Okine in there, he went forward, moved his hands, doubled up, tripled up the hook, and then finished with the right hand. Okine was there. Shannon overshooting him with the right hand at first, then getting his distance, doubling, tripling the hook up. First one didn't land, the second one did, and then finishing the show with the right hand. Okine standing straight up. In British David Price was touted as the next big thing in heavyweight boxing after winning the bronze medal in the 2008 Olympics. When he faced 41-year-old Tony Thompson, he had a perfect record of 15-0 and the American was supposed to be a stepping stone. However, in a dramatic turn of events, Thompson floored Price with a brutal right hook behind the ear in round two. Price did manage to get back to his feet, but struggled to maintain his balance. In his 30th professional fight, undefeated Michael Moore squared off against Billy Wright. In the second round, Moore landed a combination that had right on jelly legs before following up with another combination that put him on the floor. Wright staggered to his feet, but he was in no condition to continue fighting. Off in the second round. Wright throws the left hook to the body, but does not get his hand up. He is wobbled and then nailed with several more punches. Trying to clear his head. And uh, from any other angle, it's just as painful for Billy Wright. The interesting thing is Wright was in a position to throw the hook, but threw it badly and was hurt by the short punches of Michael Moore. Ironically, the jab there is the one that really... Petro Sinanian and Christian Baez squared off in a scheduled 10-round bout. Baez controlled the action for most of the fight, but Ananian only needed just one punch to change the course of the fight. Oh! That buckled him. He's still hurt. He's still hurt. Wow. That's what Anania needed. What drama. He's hurt. He might not make it. That's it. It is all over. Wow. Petros Anania finishes Christian Baez. All it took was one big shot. He's still hurt. 
Tony Tubbs tried to stand his ground against 21-year-old heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. However, Tyson proved to be too much for Tubbs to handle. Tyson added Tubbs to his list of victims with a brutal left hook that reeled him across the ring in the second round. It was a left hook. And it's over. Odell hands, which did the damage. Well, Tyson now starting to find his range. That left hook there pretty much did spoke for itself. It's self-explanatory because it was a short and powerful left hook that put Tony Tubbs down. And here Mike still showing what it was happening actually was that Tyson was wearing down Tubbs because Tubbs tried to stay inside and fight Mike Tyson and fight. Which I in February 2023, Lee Wood defended his WBA World Featherweight title against Mexican Mauricio Lara in front of a home crowd in Nottingham. Wood put on an exciting performance against the challenger and was seemingly cruising to victory, but a left hook from Lara changed everything in round seven. Well timed, but Wood was able to beat the count, but he was clearly on wobbly legs, and his corner threw in the towel. Can Lara finish it here now? Barely 10 seconds to go, and the towel. Shandu was happy to sit there and take a shot. What a left hook, peach perfect. Yeah, Lara sent his up from that left leg. You could see him bend the body there, look. Crisp, accurate, full power. Lee's left hook wasn't timed quite right. Ladies and gentlemen, the blue corner throws in the towel, causing referee Michael Alexander call a halt to this contest. The official time of this. In 1980, Olympic medalist John Mugabe was one of the most feared punchers in boxing. But in March 1990, 22-year-old Terry Norris tamed the beast as he wobbled the champion with a left hook 45 seconds into the fight. His skills as much as he can. In 2014, Nonito Donaire and Nicholas Walters met for the WBA Featherweight Championship. However, the hard-hitting Jamaican proved to be too much for Donaire to handle. Not as as that left hand, left. Oh, oh, that was a good idea. In round six, Walters rocked Donaire with a big right hand to the temple. To his credit, Donaire got back to his feet, but he was in no shape to continue. He won't get up this time. He's up, but Raul Caiz is going to stop it. Nicholas Walters has seized Donaire's portion of the featherweight title. And that could be the but Raul Caiz. Fetch you in the long run. And then it was all finished by that big overhand right, right on the temple. Right on the temple. You wonder what kind of punch in a boxing ring might concuss you? That was. In this classic matchup, Argentina's Julio Cesar Vasquez was trailing on points after 10 rounds against WBA champion Carl Daniels. But Vasquez only needed a single straight left to end the fight. Julio Cesar Vasquez and Dan oh, Daniels is hot with a left hand. Poor Daniels tried to get back to his feet, but failed miserably. for the past couple of rounds. All of a sudden, he gets cut with that left hand, and I mean hit clutch on the jaw. Now, Daniels cannot recover from that shot. He's strong enough to pan and really surprised by a powerful, powerful left shot. It counts up to five and six. He's in deep trouble. It's up to seven and eight. He's not going to make it. I don't think nine and the uh, count. Argentine Marcelo Coceres wasted no time in putting away his compatriot Lionel Avila for the South American light heavyweight title. In round two, Coceres put Avila on spaghetti legs with a brutal combination that ended with a right hook. Lee 
Roy Jones Jr. and Antonio Tarver met in a highly anticipated rematch following a controversial majority decision in favor of Jones in their first meeting. However, no one anticipated the shocking outcome of the rematch. In round two, Tarver did what no other fighter has been able to do. He handed Jones the first knockout defeat of his career. Roy, problem. Roy has not found a way still to get a sustained attack against him. And there it goes, Jones, and a hard left hand, and that is the first that Roy Jones has ever been hurt. Only Lou Cabal ever knocked him down. Jones may not get up, and he makes it up. It's over. Jay Nady stops the fight. And this is the first time in his career he's really been hurt. He's gone down before one time, but there was a perfect left hand. Roy never saw it coming. Roy is out. And Roy may be out of boxing. And that's why Tarver wanted to be the counterpuncher, because he answered Roy's right hand with a perfect left hand shot that knocked Jones out. There it was. One previous knockdown against Lou Duval, that was a flash in Madison Square Garden in New York. This is the first. In 2013, undefeated champion Adrian Broner defended his WBA welterweight title against Argentina's Marcos Maidana. Broner was made to pay dearly for taking his opponent too lightly. In round eight, Maidana landed a vicious left hook that saw Broner's legs give out from under him. Marcos Maidana that sends Broner down. And again, that left hook landed. 37-year-old Michael Moorer was past his prime when he faced Kazakhstan Olympic gold medalist and former cruiserweight champion Vasily Jirov in 2004. Jirov was well on his way to beating Moorer when the former light heavyweight and heavyweight champion unloaded with a short left hand. Jirov immediately jumped up on wobbly legs and staggered back into the ropes. He worked with him on, his, on the physical part of it, and of course his corner uh, did the training for the fight. And uh, Michael Moore, while he was way behind in this fight, in my opinion, I'd be interested to see the judges' cards, but left no doubt about it with that left hand. And here's where the mistake happened for Vasily. Trying to stand up, just stay on one knee. The, the problem is it's hard to teach somebody how to do that because you're not thinking cognitively at that point. You're hurt, you're knocked out, you're fading in and out of, of consciousness. Two English rivals, Chris Eubank Jr. and Liam Smith, met in the ring for the first time to settle their differences in January 2023. Eubanks had his moments in the fight, but in round four, Smith made an emphatic statement with a series of combinations that sent Eubank down for the first time in his career. Eubank quickly got up, but staggered drunkenly towards the referee. Undefeated Olympic gold medalist Andre Ward got a scare in his seventh professional fight against Darnell Boone. The journeyman stunned him with a right hook, followed by another right uppercut that made him do a funny chicken dance in the fourth round. Boom сам не ожидал. Uppercut справа. David Tua was often compared with Mike Tyson for his explosive power and fighting style. He has one of the most lethal left hooks in heavyweight history. Watch how his left hook destroyed Shane Sutcliffe's equilibrium. Well, David Tua's calling card is the left hook. In that case, he was able to lead with the punch, get it in against Sutcliffe, and Sutcliffe went down in a heap. 
Shane did get up pretty quickly, and that's probably part of his argument for continuing the fight, but clearly he was hurt. Tua has not lunged in with that left hook like that very much during this fight, but it's that kind of leaping left hook that got Rachman in trouble uh, after Tua had really been outboxed for a number of rounds. And that's the problem with fighting David Tua. You may outbox him over a certain amount of rounds. You may feel even like you have him in... Jorge Linares, a former three-division world champion, was expected to be the toughest test for the young WBC lightweight champion Devin Haney. The Venezuelan veteran lived up to his reputation as he put on a masterclass against Haney. At the end of round 10, Linares caught Haney with a brutal combination. Haney wobbled back to his corner while Linares swung his arms to the side to show Haney the direction. Wait a minute! And it was that right hand, that short right hand by Linares. That's the punch that I knew was going to be the money punch. That hurt Devin. It's a short right hand. Business is about to pick up. Which of these fights is your favorite chicken dance moment? Let us know your answer in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post notifications for more interesting content.